sis. If you're new here, my name is TMR, where we talk reactions and reviews. If you're back again, sis, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. All right, you knew I had to do it, girl. But now that I have your attention, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and make sure you click your notification bell. It's right by the subscribe button. So, boo, you ain't got to go real far. So, therefore, every time I drop a new video, you will be the first one to know it. How's everybody doing today? All right, you guys, for my oldie but goodies, y'all already know what time it is. It's XTMR time, okay? And on this channel, you guys, we go to a website or an app called X Herbie. And over there, you guys, they post a lot of um questions. They, you know, they have, they have different areas where they ask for advice. They do celebrity gossip. They talk about everyday issues. And so what I have done is I have went to the website, got some of the questions, and I put, put them on here on the channel just so we can, they're asking for advice anonymously so anybody can answer. So why not ask me, okay? And then what I would like for you guys to do is if you have any suggestions or thoughts or opinions about the advice that's being asked, Go ahead and leave your comments down below. Now, again, if I read this comment and it pertains to you, boo, yeah, you don't have to out yourself out in the comment section. You can and will stay anonymous over here on XTMR. Okay? Okay. All right, you guys. So let's go ahead and start with the first question. So the first question reads, um, I want to quit. All right, so you guys, I have it down here on my tablet, so I'm going to be looking down so I can read, and then, of course, when I finish reading, I'll give my attention fully back to you, okay? All right, so it says, I want to quit. Um, I'm so tired of being a cashier. It's only been about uh, going on five weeks, and I'm already over this job. There's some rude-ass customers who really get on my nerves. Okay, I, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not one of them customers, okay? Whenever I go into um, establishments where um, customer service is needed, y'all, I try to be as uh, polite as possible because I know what it feels like to work with the public, okay? So because I have been in that situation, I don't want to give it to somebody else because I know how it is to be on the receiving end, okay? Um. Then there's the customers who act effing clueless, okay? So this person is giving us examples of what they're experiencing at their job as a cashier. It says example one, card reader buzzes, remove car, card reader buzzes, and it says remove card. Customer looks at me. Customer, do I remove my card? Me, what does the screen say? Okay, child, I mean, I, it says remove card. What you, it, the machine ain't gonna remove it itself. Child, I, Anonymous, I know where you're going, boo. Okay. Um, example two. I'm trying to close out so I can go home, right? All right. So I turn my light off and people are still coming to my damn lane. I have to keep explaining that I'm closed. You know, when light, when the light is on, the lane is open. No light, the ain't lane is not open. And you know not to come. And then they ask, you open, and I guess she's saying, head ass. I, yeah, I don't know, y'all. Some of these, these people, when they type it, y'all, they don't proofread it, so your girl do the best she can with translating, okay? So example three is, I have to check IDs for alcohol and tobacco, or else I can't sell it. State law in North Carolina, in case you don't know, the guy comes and tries to buy the alcohol and tells me he has no ID. So I explain so she said, so I explained to him, I cannot sell alcohol to anybody without seeing an ID. He goes away. Then 30 minutes later, he returns. He throws his wallet across my till and says, here go my damn ID. Okay. So anonymous, well, first and foremost, I don't know how old you are. Okay. But obviously, um, being a cashier is not the job for you. Um, some people can't work with the public, okay? I mean, it's just, because y'all, we know, it's being consumers ourselves, um, you know, customer service, good customer service is hard to find. 
and us being consumers, sometimes you guys, when you go out and, and you, you know, you're at a restaurant, you're buying something to eat, or you're at um, Best Buy buying something, or you just wherever, okay? And a lot of times people who are in the, you know, public sector of taking care of customers because you're dealing with all different varieties, ethnicities of people, um, yeah, you're getting all type of attitudes and issues. So what I would encourage this person to do, I don't know if you have a, you know, education, if you graduated high school or you graduated college or if you even attempted to graduate college, first and foremost, obviously you can see working these type of jobs, this is a type of um, situation you're going to be in. So I would advise you to go back to school and further your education, you know, um, as long as you aren't, um, you know, and don't get me wrong, being a cashier is not a horrible job. I've been a cashier before too. Like at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do to put food on your table and pay your bills. But if you're this stressed out about your job and you've only been there five weeks, I guarantee you, baby, it's not going to get any better. Like you will have days where you have really good customers come in and then you're going to have many more days um, where you're going to get those horrible customers. It's always, baby, it's always take that one to throw your whole day off. So what I would do is I would, you know, reevaluate, you know, exactly what you want to do. Um, I would go to your, um, unemployment office in your, I, the person lives in North Carolina. So I would go to the unemployment office in your city. Um, there's a lot of times that most unemployment office, they'll let you take type a test where you can match your um, skills or your personality with the type of skills you have with the type of jobs that's out there in your city. You know, maybe you just don't have the personality um, to deal with people. You know, so there's a lot of people like that. A lot of people can't deal with other people, you know. So I would advise you to, to start taking steps to make your situation better. Because as long as you had a job that you do not like, like you never going to want to go. So what's the point of having a job? You don't never want to go because you're not going to earn any money. Okay. Y'all let anonymous know what you feel like they should do in the comments. And we're going to move on to the next advice. Okay. All right, you guys. So this one is coming from a person by the name of pink cuts. Okay. So pinky, if you in the comments, baby, you, you don't want to be recognized. Yeah. Don't, don't say anything. Okay. Okay. All right, so this one is called Some Church Folks. Um, it says, there has, there has been this church I have been going to for some Sundays while also getting baptized myself. But for some reason, I still feel out of place. They're there or catching some weird vibes from it. Also, a few others make me side-eye them because I think they use God as nothing more than an excuse or a doormat to get away with some effed up ish weight. Uh, what y'all think? Okay, y'all, again, I'm just reading what they type. Okay, okay. Um, so, uh, Pinky, Pink Cuts, basically, she's going to a church um, that she had been visiting for a while. She's gotten baptized, so I'm assuming she's now a member of the church, but she says she's still not feeling, she's feeling out of place. Um, she's also side eyeing some of the church members. Now, what I'm probably thinking is the same members that sitting in the pew on Sunday, more than likely are the same members that sitting next to her on, in the bar on Saturdays. Okay. That could be, that's could That could be the reason why she's giving these people the side eye because why are you giving these people the side eye? And if you don't really know them, obviously these are probably people in her community that she frequents. Like when she go to the liquor store and get her something to drink, they probably stand in the line behind her, in the line in front of her. I don't know. Okay. Um, but what I would suggest to you, Pinky, is um, find you a church home that obviously you are comfortable in and that you can relish in. Now, again, y'all, church is not for everybody. You know, we all have our own beliefs about the church and what goes on in the church. And again, y'all, I don't, I don't get into religion. If those are your beliefs, those are your beliefs. Um, I was brought up in the church. Okay. My father, um, was a ordained minister. So I'm a PK. Okay. So 
Um, I know what it is to be brought up in the church, but I also know how it feels to go to some churches and just don't feel that feeling. I have done that to you guys. I have been to churches in my, in, in my lifetime where I just didn't feel like I didn't, the spirit wasn't moving me in there. Okay. And you know what? I just decided to visit another church until I truly did find my church home. So that's what I would advise, um, pink cuts. That's what I would advise you to do, boo. I would advise you to keep find, keep visiting different churches, okay? Just because you got baptized does not mean that you have to stay and belong to that church. You can belong to any church you want to. Or maybe go to the pastor and talk to the pastor. Now, I know a lot of people say the pastors be, you know, sometimes are the busiest, biggest sinners in the church. Okay, y'all, but that's not all pastors, okay? So we're not going to generalize all pastors. There are, there are truly still some good men of, of the cloth out here, okay? So what I would advise Pink Cuts to do is to visit other churches. Um, you know, if if you have a job, Pink Cuts, maybe ask some of your fellow co-workers what church they belong to. Um, depending on how big your city is, you know, I, again, I would just frequent different churches until you really feel like um, the right church home is the right fit for you. And that's what I would advise you to do. OK, y'all let Pink Cuts know what she should do with her church situation. OK, OK. All right, you guys. So let's move on to the next one. OK, all right, you guys. So here is our next um, advice. Um, this one comes from Anonymous, okay? And the title of this is My Bussy. Yeah, I, baby, I just read them. I don't write them, okay? All right. So, My Bussy. It says, okay, so, boom. I am gay. Okay. And I'm scared for him to hit it from the back. Okay. Um, cause bitch, it feels like pressure and it feels weird and he wants to stick it in, but sis, I ain't feeling it. Help me. Okay. All right. Anonymous, um, baby. So, um, like you said, you, you gay. Okay. And obviously you like. You're a man and you like other men. You're attracted to other men, okay? And, um, yeah, I don't know because I'm a woman, but based off the television programs I have watched and the books I have read, um, yeah, um, in order for you guys to have intercourse, baby, that's, yeah, that's what you gotta do, okay? Uh-huh, he gotta, he gotta hit it from the back. Um, yeah. So, what I would advise you to do, um, and get you some motion lotion, um, you know, um, or you, you know, you just gonna have to take it like a man. Okay. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Cause baby, if you're going to live that lifestyle and if you're going to be intimate with these men, um, yeah, baby, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. That's how y'all have intercourse. At least that's now that's what I seen on TV and what I saw. Anyway. Um, so I would advise you maybe to get you some porno, uh, pornography and maybe take a look at that. See if you can get some tips. Y'all let, uh, anonymous. Yeah. If y'all got, uh, okay. Anyway. All right. Y'all, we, we had to read that cause it might be some people out here that's watching my channel that's having the same issues. Cause although I say, you know, sis, sis can be me. A sis can be a, you know, a man. I mean, I don't know. Okay? Okay. All right. All right, you guys. Let's move on to the next one. For the last one we have, you guys, we just have one more. Um, and this one actually is coming from um, a subscriber of mine. Okay? And again, um, they, uh, she will be, um, she will remain anonymous. Okay? But we're just going to read. So what she did, you guys, she went to Axe Herbie and she left the, um, information on there and then she dm'd me and told me that she put it on there i went to look for it i couldn't find it so i had her send it to me um in my dm okay so um we're gonna go ahead and read her situation and we're gonna try to help our fellow sis okay okay all right so this um this it reads i need some advice i met a man on a dating site almost a year ago he reached out to me 
and we had a good conversation. He shared history and I shared mine. He asked why I'm on the site. He asked why, why am I on the site? We talked about any and everything. I felt this person was the real deal. I made my move too soon after a while in the relationship. He said that he wanted to get married. I should have listened to my gut feeling when something not right, it's not. I felt God saying, don't do it, but I didn't think about the saying, God take care of babies, old folks, and fools. Um, I'm all... I'm all three long stories short. I'm okay, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, it says I'm all there. Long story short, I moved in with him, and the promise we made to one another was not done by him. I did all what I felt that makes a good relationship. All he wanted was to have a woman to cook, clean, and do laundry, and for and make him feel feel his needs and fulfill his needs. All, all what he said he wanted in this relationship, he lied. I get nothing from him. I went to my heavenly father and asked for forgiveness for what I did. I'm moving out once I get my funds to move. Whew, okay, y'all. Anonymous got a lot going on here, so we're going we gonna to start from the top. Now, you said that you met this man on a dating site. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? This is 2020. And y'all, that, that's how a lot of people meet, you know, nowadays. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you said he reached out to me and we had a good conversation. Okay, so you he sought you out. Um, he shared history and I shared mine. He asked why I'm on the site. He asked why I'm on the site. Okay, so you didn't say why. So I'm assuming you was on the site for the same reason he was on the site to find somebody. Okay, all right. And we talk about any and everything. I felt this person was the real deal. I made my move too soon. Okay. So that's, I think that's where the problem was, sis. You said you made your move too soon. First of all, you said he sought you out. So at the end of the day, you should have continued to let him do the chasing. So therefore, you could have, all the things that you said that he was about, you didn't, from what you said, you made your move too soon. So obviously, from what you're saying, it sounds like you didn't allow him to prove himself to you. Because you got to remember, baby, you know, when, when we meet somebody, we, everybody is strangers. Yeah, we don't know We don't know when we meet each other. We're, we're meeting strangers, okay? So you had to get to know him. He had to get to know you. Um, you said you guys have dated for almost a year. So when you say almost a year, sis... Was that six months, nine months, 11 months, 30, 28 days? Like, what's almost a year? Um, now, you, I mean, some people say it, it takes six months to a year to get to know somebody. I mean, it really is no time frame. I mean, you have to have your senses and you have to know how to feel people out. And obviously, if you dated before and, if you know, you know what you, if something went wrong in those relationships, you know what you don't want to get in any new relationships okay um so um you said i made my move too soon after a while in the relationship he said that he wanted to get married i should have listened to my gut feeling when we when something not right it's not right okay so you, so you said he wanted to get married okay so it sounds like sis that you moved in with this man and y'all didn't tie the knot before you moved in it because you didn't say y'all did get married. You said y'all wanted to get married, but you didn't say y'all did get married. So I'm going to assume that y'all are not married, okay? So, you know, why buy the cow, baby, when the milk is free? So, you know, like you you, you just said yourself, sis, that you moved fast. You acted on him first. Then you moved in with him, right? It's not that he moved in with you. He, he You moved in with him. So once you moved in with him, baby, you you gave him control, right? Because now, you, like you just said at the end, you said you're going to leave, you're going to move out when you get your funds together. So it sounds like, baby, that you went into a situation where you were kind of dependent on him and what he had to offer, okay? 
Um, and that's always a no, no. Like when you get into a relationship, baby, you, you need, you need to bring as much to the table as the man is bringing to the table. You know, um, if you got a job, he got to have a job. You got a car, he got to have a car. Not he looking for a car or he looking for a job. If that's the case, baby, when, once he find it, then he needs to look you back up and see if you're available. Okay. Now that'd be the problem when we get into a lot of times when we get into these relationships, you guys, and I can say this from experience when we're not matching. Okay. We, you know, um, everybody needs to come with, with the same thing. Okay. Because when, when someone is less, has less than you, it, it, baby, it takes them a while to, to move up to where you're at, you know? So guess what? You're always uneven. Okay. Um, and a lot of times too, you know, you have to understand what people, you know, um, what their morals are, um, what their expectations are, what their values are. You know, you, you have to also know that too. You know, um, again, you said y'all talked about, he talked about his past. You talked about your past. Um, but just because he talked about it, baby, don't necessarily mean it's true. Like it's really hard to date. Because a lot of times, baby, it takes a long time to really get to know a person, you know. Um, there's really no time frame. Sometimes it could take two, three years, you know. It's just hard to tell. Um, you said all he wants you, all he wanted a woman for was to cook, clean, and do laundry and and fill his needs. So basically, you you said um, so basically you said he wanted to get married. But it sounds like y'all didn't get married. So again, baby, you um you gave him the cow, so why should he buy the milk? You know, you you should have if if marriage was on the table, you said he discussed marriage, then um I think you would felt better if you was his wife and you were providing all these needs because as a wife, that's what we do, you know. Um, but I, I think you're you're saying you feel more like, like a confidant instead of um his mate. Um, and you know, at this point, baby, it's, it sounds like you already know what you want. And you said that God, um, God takes care of babies, old folks and fools. Well, you know what, sis, I wouldn't necessarily call yourself a fool. I, I know you're not a baby and I don't know if you're old or not because I don't know your age. But what I will tell you is, you know, God gave us senses, you know, and you got to know how to use them. God also gave us emotions and you can't help to love, you know, you can't help to, to like, and you can't help to love, but you, you know, you got to be careful where you give your heart to. Cause a lot of people are not going to take care of your heart as well as you would take care of your own. Okay. Um, now again, I don't know this man. All I know is what you're telling me. And I'm not saying what you're saying is incorrect, but there's also his side too. You know, he might be feeling some type of way too. You got to think about it, boo. If you asking Herbie, who you think he asking? You know, it's, I think at this point, baby, you need to sit down and you need to talk to this man and you need to tell what you just asked, what you just asked Herbie, you need to tell it to him because he is the one that's there with you. You know, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't reach out to, because sometimes, you know, if you don't have a close friend to talk to, sometimes it's best to get opinions from people that you don't know because they're unbiased, you know, opinions. Um, and I'm not saying that you did anything wrong, but, you know, at the end of the day, baby, you got to go to the source, okay? And the source is the man that you're dealing with. You need to go to him and you need to say, hey, upon us get living in this house together, there were things that you and I talked about that you said that you were going to do and you haven't came through with that. You need to tell him that you are feeling used. You feel like, you know, all you're there for is to cook, clean, and service him in the bedroom and you're more than that, okay? But, um, sis, I don't know if you're working or not. If you're not working, sis, I advise you to go get a job. At the end of the day, if you and him both working, y'all both can take turns at cooking and cleaning and, and service each, each other in the bedroom, okay? Of course, you guys, it's a woman's, um, the woman keeps the house clean. She tends after the children. You know, she manages the household and the man brings home the bacon and the woman fries it up in the pan, okay? But y'all, that was really, you know, back in the leave it to beaver Cleaver type era, you know, baby, we in 2020 at the end of the day, we both need to be walking out the door. And at the end of the day, we both going to bring home that bacon and we, you can fry the bacon one day and I can fry the bacon the next day. You know, um, it takes, it takes a team to run a relationship. When you're in a relationship, baby, it's team 
work. And if he's not being a part of the team, then there is definitely a problem, sis. I definitely would sit down and talk to your your significant other and let him know what, what you're feeling. Let him know that you're wanting to leave. And if he loves you enough, he will figure out a way to make you stay. Until the next time, I will see y'all in the next video. Remember you guys, sub what you love. Bye-bye.